And I thank God, hallelujah, that the veil has been ripped in two. Amen. And you can have that relationship with the Lord because of Jesus. Hallelujah. He's made a way. Thank God. Hallelujah. And I praise him for his goodness. And I praise him because he's God. Amen. Amen. That, that's good enough. Amen. We don't need anything else. Amen. Amen. If you just testify and say, I thank God because he's God. Hallelujah. Yes. And, and that's good enough because we serve an awesome God. Praise yes. the Lord. Amen. As Tanya mentioned too, the last thing that I want to do is have to cancel. But, um, you know, sometimes it's out of our control. But and and I will say again, I, I you know I miss being here, Amen. I'm, I feel like what Tanya said, it just don't feel right, Amen. And I thank God that I have that desire to want to serve the Lord, you know. I, I, I shared a post today that another minister of the gospel shared, and it talked about if you're a Christian. No one should have to beg you to go to church. Amen. It should be your desire, as, as it says in the Psalms. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Amen. Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's where I belong, and it's where you belong. Amen. And it's where others need to be. Praise the Lord. This is the place where we can receive and where we can be blessed and we can just praise him. Amen. We come in here to worship him and to praise him. Turn to the book of Psalms. Psalms 18. This is one. One of my favorite. I can't. I could never put a, a, a favorite. There's just so much. There's so much good, good word. Amen. And so many good scriptures. But this is just one of them that has blessed me down through the years. Psalms 18. Amen. This is the this is the Psalm of David. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's just praise him and glorify him. Amen. As it says in Psalms 18, I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength, in whom I will trust, my buckler and the horn of my salvation. And my high tower, I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you. We praise you for your goodness. We thank you, Lord, that you are our God. And you are so good. And you are great and greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. And I praise you tonight. And I just pray, Lord, that those that have come out to your house tonight, I pray that your blessings be upon them, Lord. And I pray that those that aren't here, that you'll give them a desire, Lord, to be found in the house of the Lord when the doors are open, God. Give us a hunger and give us a thirst, Lord, for you. More of you, God. We can't get enough, Lord. And Lord, I pray, God, that you would hide me behind the cross. Lord, anoint my words. Use me. God, I am your servant, Lord. And Lord, I know I can do nothing without you, Lord. You are my everything. And I look to you tonight. 
In Jesus' name. And everyone said? Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. I was reading in my devotions and, and just, you know, down in Psalms here as I was sharing and reading and I come to this scripture, which is one of my favorite. I always have underlined or highlighted because if there's one thing, David got it right. Amen. When he declared all the things that the Lord was to him, you know, and it's a question that we can ask ourselves. What is the Lord to you? See, David knew where he stood with the Lord. Amen. And a wonderful, wonderful thing to know where you stand with God. Amen. Because we, when it all comes down to it, that's what's going to count. Amen. If you have a relationship with Jesus Christ, I know you can have all the religion, you can have all the formality. And you can even have all the, the church or should I say the religious, you know, outward appearance. Uh, but that's not what it's about. It's having a relationship with the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. And David declared here in the scriptures that he said, I will love thee, O Lord. And the first thing that I want you to realize is that David, if you read in the scriptures, he was a musician. Amen. He played the harp and he sang. He wasn't no he wasn't just a shepherd and he and later became king, but he was a musician. He played his harp and he sang unto the Lord. Amen. I want you to know that it is important when you sing praises unto God. Hallelujah. And that this is one thing that we've got to focus on tonight. Is the main thing is that he sang. Sang unto the Lord a psalm of praise. Yes. Do you have a psalm on your heart? You know, you can ask someone, you know, if you say what your favorite scripture is or what the Lord has laid. I, I truly believe there should be some kind of scripture in your heart each day. Amen. If someone speaks, you know, talks about that. If someone comes to you, you're to have an answer to give that brother, to give that sister of what the Lord has done in your life and give them the answer of salvation. I want you to know if someone comes to me, I'm going to give them Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm going to let them know that he's my Lord and that he has delivered me and that he has healed me and that he has touched me and saved me. Praise God as he done something for you today. Amen. This isn't just something that we talk about. Thank God we can stand and talk about the day that we got saved. But I want you to know this experience goes farther than that. It goes beyond just the day that you're saved. It goes on and every day your relationship with the Lord. As the song says, uh, and he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me that I am his own. Hallelujah. I want you to know that's talking about having a relationship with the Lord. And just as David did, he made a praise unto God. This is something that we've got to put in practice in our lives. This is something, you know, that I don't, when you come into this church house, I don't want you to be backward. I don't want you to feel uncomfortable. No, I want you to be free. I want you to have the liberty to raise your hands and to glorify the Savior and to lift your voice unto God. And even as it says here, I want you to know there's a lot of singing in the scriptures. Amen. We are to have a new song on our heart. Amen. God wants to give us that new song. And I want you to know in a world that we're living in, sometimes you turn, you know, Shannon was even saying he was getting all the news feed on his phone. And he said, I, I just got to turn it off. It can sometimes get you down or it can get you depressed. No, turn on uh, uh, the song of the Lord. Uh, find a scripture verse or find something that's going to lift your soul, that's going to magnify the Lord and to give Him the praise. And I want you to know you're not going to be down in the dumps, uh, but the glory of the Lord will come down and He will fill you to overflow. Praise, praise the Lord. And sometimes we need that. And even it's those that say they're Christians, you'd never know it by the look on their face. 
Sometimes you're looking out and you're saying, do you have the joy of the Lord? Because I just don't see it in your face. I don't see it in your expressions. No, it says to have a, a, a merry heart. Hallelujah. It doeth good. It is like medicine to the soul. God, give us a heart uh, with joy and with praise and with thanksgiving. Hallelujah. Why? Because the Lord's been good to us. Amen. David wanted to declare it. He didn't want to just keep it to himself, but he wanted to share it with others. See, when God does something good for you, you're going to want to tell it. You're going to want to share it. I want you to know there, and I would say to this day, ever since that happened to me, and that was, that wasn't when I got saved, that, you know, that wasn't a year after, it was years after I was saved, and even in ministry, God came on me, and when he came on me strong, I didn't want to keep it to myself, no, I wanted to lay my hands on others, I wanted to give that gift, I wanted to stir up the gift that was within them by the laying on of hands. Hallelujah. Why? Because God had done a great work in me. I felt the joy of the Lord because the joy of the Lord will be your strength. See, it talks about to sing unto the Lord. And that's what David did as he began to declare all the things that God had been to him. See, that's one thing we've got to remember. And that's the things that we've got to keep in the back of our mind. And even from day to day, it's not, it wouldn't be... It wouldn't hurt us uh, not a bit that if we got up and we would start to think of all the things and we would be like David, we would think of all the things that God has been to us. Right. Amen? Amen? It says in Psalms 104, I will sing unto the Lord as long as I live. Amen? That means if you got breath in your body, that means you need to lift your hands and you need to give him the praise. You need to shout unto God with a voice of triumph and you need to thank him for the things that he has done. It says, as long as I live, I will sing praises to my God, and while I have my being, hallelujah. That means God has blessed us. God has given us good health. Uh, he has given us strength in our bodies. As I said today, I, I've been feeling better, and it's a wonderful thing. And I say, Lord, I want to praise you, because I, I want you to know sickness is a terrible thing. And, and more and more I'm hearing of those that are fighting sicknesses and diseases and as I said the other day you know about all the you know technology and all the things that we have in the world but it seems like there's more and more sickness see this is what doesn't this isn't what God wants for us and I want you to know, this is the key. You need to thank the Lord. You need to praise Him. You need to glorify Him. Even in the good times, even in the bad times, at all times, as it says in Psalms, it says His praise shall continually be in my mouth. That means at all times. Sometimes we got to catch ourselves, you know, and we let that negative word go forth. You know, we got to say, no, no, I'm going to give God the glory. You know, we were saying about that, you know. Yeah, we've been on medicine and we've been taking our antibiotics. And Shannon caught himself and he said, I think it's working. And then he's like, no, I'm going to give Jesus the praise. Amen. I know that all things, amen, is because of God. Amen. And we want to give him the praise first. Hallelujah. You know, we catch ourselves. We're giving man the... No, I'm going to give God the praise first. I'm going to let him know that with anything in my body, with anything in my life, I know that it's his hand. Amen. As it says in James 5, 13, it says, Is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Amen. We were just saying the other day, I don't know how anyone goes through this life without Jesus. I don't know how they get through without being able to call upon the name of the Lord. Amen. To be able to pray as we were here. Nancy and I were here this morning praying. We even had the chickens coming. 
<laughs> they came to the door. The rooster was at the front door. It was kind of comical because it, it just looked like they, you know, they were. He was a loud mouth. He was, you know, crowing or whatever you call it, and clucking. I don't know what you call it. But he was, he was going to town, and he, it was almost like he was saying, "Let me in." <laughs> But hey, it talks about creation, and it talks about hallelujah, but it does say, let everything that I breath praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to have breath, and I want to have praise in my heart and in my mind, and even when I come into prayer, I'm going to praise Him first before I take any need to Him. Hallelujah. hallelujah. But it says if you're afflicted, let him pray. Oh, thank God. We can pray to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We can pray to the God of heaven. And we can know that even Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father. And it says he makes intercession right. for you and me. Amen. Hallelujah. But then it goes on to say, is any Mary? Let him sing psalms. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, it's important that we have a song in our heart of praise. That we thank God, as David did, he said, I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. Hallelujah. To love the Lord, to give him my everything, I want you to know there's a lot of love in this world. And you know what? A lot of it is conditional. But I want you to know the love of God is unconditional. And it is long-suffering. And it will come to you. And he will show his love to you in great and mighty ways. Yes. I saw where a young girl, she posted saying how the, the song, you know, Oh, how I love Jesus. Why? Because he first loved me. Hallelujah. And it's the reason that we can praise him. And that's the reason that we can love him. Because he first loved you. He died for you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Amen. He loved you. And we need to realize that this is important for our spiritual walk. And you'd say, well, I just don't have it tonight. Uh, I don't have the joy of the Lord. You'd be surprised of those that proclaim Jesus, but they don't have the joy of the Lord. Uh, they don't have a praise in their heart. And that all that's coming out is, is negative. I want you to know it's our place that we take the time to give God the glory and the praise. Yes. As it says in Ephesians 519, speaking to yourselves in psalms and in hymns. You know, we were singing hymns tonight. And, and I think, well, we're, we're following scripture. I know not all the churches are singing the hymns. But, you know, we were singing those hymns. They're songs, you know. Oh, say, but I'm glad. Hallelujah. Why? Because Jesus is filling my heart, overflowing with the joy and the spirit of the Lord. Because he has saved my soul. He has cleansed me from all righteous, or unrighteousness. And he has made me whole. Hallelujah. Talks about singing loudly. You know, some people say, she's too loud. You know, I, I got that a little bit when I started preaching. You know, it, that, was, that was just the power of God. Because I want you to know, when I got up here, I needed God. And most of all, it was for me and it was for you to know that it was God. It wasn't me. But it talks about singing loudly, letting your praise be heard. You know, we got these secret, a, secret agent Christians, you know. You'd never know that they're a Christian. They don't speak up. There's no, I, I want you to know, it's more than just the talk. It's the walk. We've got to realize that God is looking for our lives to, uh, to follow through with everything that we say or do. But it says, sing aloud unto God our strength. Uh, make a joyful noise unto the God of Jacob. Hallelujah. I want you to know, give your praise to God. Because I want you to know, the same time that you're blessing Him, He's blessing you. 
The same time that you're lifting your hands and you're glorifying the Savior, He's going to pour out to His Holy Spirit upon you. And I truly believe there have been in times where people have been in praise and glorifying Him that they, they've received healing. I always remember, and I don't know if I get it totally right, but I've heard it over and over. I should know it by heart. Dad always told about the woman that came every day to church. And she would praise the Lord for 15 minutes. And, and, and the way if I get it right, someone came, a man came into the church and he started, he started playing the piano. And I don't think it was on key or something. And he started messing with the piano. He started fooling with it and he put it, put it back together. And he began to play a beautiful melody. And it was, I don't know if it was a vision that she had, but she said it, it was the Lord Jesus Christ letting him know, this is what I'm doing with your life. See, when we take the time to praise the Lord, we will find victory. And I want you to know if you're distressed or you're, you've got problems and there's trouble your way, you can find victory when you spend time praising the Lord. Finding him. Why? Because as David declared, he is my rock. Hallelujah. I want you to know there's no other foundation that I want to stand upon than the rock of my salvation, which is Jesus Christ the Lord. On Christ the solid rock I stand. No other ground. I want you to get all other ground is sinking sand. You put your trust in this world. I want you to know you're on sinking sand. Jesus talked about that. If you read it there in the scriptures. He talked about finding ourselves on the ground. You know, you build your house on the rock. And if you build your house on the sand. If you build it on the rock, hallelujah, when those storms come and when those trials come and when the winds blow, your house is going to stand. But when you build your house on the, on the sand, you're going to find your, yourself in a trouble. You're going to find yourself in a mess. We've got to put our mind on the Lord Jesus Christ. He is our rock and he is worthy of our praise. I shared, saw on there on, on Facebook where an, um, a Nigerian pastor, he gave God praise for what God was doing. And then later, I guess they're talking about, I guess a lot of the Islamic you know, terrorists coming into that land, into that area, and they beheaded him because he would not deny Jesus Christ. And I'm thinking a lot of people, yes, it is very sad, but praise God, I want to be just like that pastor. I want to declare that he is my rock, and there's no other ground to stand upon than the name of Jesus Christ. And if I have to lose my life and lay it down, God, you're going to give me the strength, and you're going to give me the power to overcome. Because I know this life is a vapor. This life is going to pass away. This world that we're living in, I want you to know this isn't the things to bank on. Uh, the world and the pleasures and the things. I want you to know what it is you need to bank on. You need to bank on Jesus Christ. Uh, he is your rock uh, and He is your stay. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. David had it right when he said in 1 Samuel, he said, For who is God? Save the Lord. And who is a rock? Save our God. See, there's no other God. I know there's all kinds of other gods out there, but I want you to know I serve the God of Isaac, Abraham. Hallelujah. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He is the one that has saved me. He is the one that has delivered me, and I'm going to put my trust in him. Amen. Even Hannah got it right in the scriptures. See, she cried out to the Lord because she wanted a baby. She wanted God to bless her. And God, God answered her prayer. And she never forgot. You know, a lot of times, you know, we see people come into church and God does something great for them. God delivers them. I saw people come in here in distress. 
They needed God and they would get prayed for and God delivered them. And some forget and never come back in. I want you to know we need more Hannah's in the world today that we will declare because God answered her prayer and blessed her, hallelujah, with Samuel. And God gave her the joy that she was longing for. And God gave her the desires of her heart. And she declared, no rock like our God. I want you to know we need to declare this in the world that we're living today. We don't need to be silent. We don't need to keep it to ourselves. No, we need to let everyone know. Hallelujah. The Lord liveth and blessed be my rock and let him be exalted. Hallelujah. The God of my salvation. Let someone know today what Jesus has done for you. Why? Because Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. It says in the scripture, Paul declared in, 12, in Hebrews 12, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for at joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. That means we can look to him. He ain't going to let you down. Others will let you down. You know, I, I think of all this stuff that's going on in our government and Brother Ron declaring, amen, that, that let God, hallelujah, we're going to look to God and that's who we need to look to. We don't need to put our trust in man. We don't need to put our trust in the world system. No, we need to look to God. He's our source tonight. Amen. In the world that we're facing today, it's nice that we have a protector. As David declared here in the scriptures, he said, my deliverer and my God, my strength. I want you to know the Lord will deliver you. Hallelujah. Many times I felt the hand of God in my life and that he delivered. And I've heard testimonies from you where you knew that God came on the scene and he delivered you. He was a shield unto you. And he protected you. Second Thessalonians says, but the Lord is faithful who shall establish you and keep you from evil. We were listening to a, a, you know, they were studying the Bible there on TV and they were talking about, you know, demons and, and the, you know, the devil and all these things. And, and it's amazing how, you know, we ran into someone years ago and we were talking about that and, oh, I don't believe in that. Well, if you believe in God, you've got to believe that there are just as God is real. I want you to know there's evil in the world. And the devil is real. The Bible talks about it. Amen. you got to know your Bible before you go talking. You've got to know it and read it for yourself. He's the enemy of your soul. And he's going to try to come against you. But praise God if you've got the Lord on your side. Hallelujah. He's going to protect you from the evil one. Amen. He said he would keep you from evil. That's why we want God. That's why we don't want to be out of the safety. We want to be safe and secure. As I've said before, it, it's a wonderful thing when the Lord delivers you. And, and you know, I was talking with Kim and, and uh, Linda last Wednesday, you know, because they didn't really know my testimony. I wouldn't expect them to get all into my testimony of how I was healed. But I was able to share with them. And I want everyone to know that it's the reason that I stand here tonight. It's God. Hallelujah. He will deliver. Deliver you, and he delivered me, and I praise his holy name tonight. Amen. Proverbs talks about, you know, keeping discretion, and, and he will preserve you, and he will give you understanding, and it shall keep you. Boy, we need that in our walk with the Lord. We need to wait. 
Hey, before we say a word or before we do something, we need to look to God. Say, Lord, I don't want to get out of your way. I want to be in your way. I want to stay close to you. I don't want to get ahead of you. No, I want you to be in front of me, leading me and showing me the way. A lot of times we want to get, it, get them out of the way and, and take the lead. When you start doing that, you'll find yourself in trouble. We've got to look to God. He's the one that will deliver. He's the one that will save you. The Lord will hear you in the day of trouble. It, talk, it says in Psalms, and, and, and the name of, of God of Jacob will defend you. It's nice when someone comes to your side and defends you and is, and, and is there to give you that push or to be that help. Boy, I want you to know it's a whole different thing when you feel like everyone's against you. But praise the Lord. And that's why I say, Lord, give our president your hand. Uh, be upon him. And Lord God, even though that the enemy is coming on strong, we know that you are there because we're going to pray and we're going to trust in you that you will be and you will lead our nation and our country in the right direction. It's what we need. Now, it doesn't mean that we're not going to face times in our lives, just as I said here, you know, I, I, I was raised in, the, in, the, in this church. My dad pastored for many years, but I was faced with, with cancer. And my mom and dad, I can't imagine the, what they went through. And, and others here that have faced trials and talking about losing loved ones. Yes, there's going to be trouble in the world. But Jesus said, be of great joy, hallelujah. Be of good cheer, hallelujah, because he said he has overcome. Hallelujah. Praise we can look to him tonight. Yes, even as it declares, and if you read in Psalms, it says, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord will deliver them out of them all. That means you've got to put your trust in the Lord. You've got to walk in obedience with the Lord. When he speaks, oh, I want to listen to his voice. Amen. And I want to obey. I want to walk in the way. I want to follow his word. Because his word will give me what I need tonight. And it will give you what you need. The strength. The strength of the Lord. When you feel like you can't go on anymore, you, I want you to know you, your strength, His grace is sufficient for you. Yeah. Paul talked about that. Because see, he had a thorn in the flesh. He had trouble. He had an illness. Something was coming against him. And he was looking to God. But Jesus said, and it's even in red there in 2 Corinthians 12, 9. He tells him, he says, and he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Hallelujah. That means when you're weak, Jesus is there to lift you up. Jesus is there to give you power and strength. Why? Because he wants all the glory and he wants all the praise. And he wants you to know that it's not in your strength, but it's in his strength. See, we've got to realize we can't put our trust in our own strength. We've got to lean on the Lord. We've got to find that refuge, that fortress, as it talks about. And it even says, in my high tower, Paul, or David declares, in the horn of my salvation and my high tower. Hallelujah. I want you to know it is true. And we sing that song. And in the, in that chorus, the name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous run into it and they are safe. You know, I always think of that, that baseball, you know, runner when he's going to the next, the next base. And it looks like it's going to be close. And that umpire has to give this signal. Hey, he's safe. 
I want you to know God is wanting to let you know that when you look to him, he's going to keep you safe from all harm. He's going to keep your, his hand upon you, even in a world where it seems like everything's falling apart uh, and you might think there's no hope. I want you to know, put your trust in the Lord and sing those songs. Look unto God and be like David. Sing unto him and let God know who he is to you, what he is to you and what he has done because he is a good, good father. Amen. He's a good God and he loves us tonight and he wants to bless us and he wants to give us favor. Can you say amen? Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. I've read stories.